we read quite a lot that America has been losing its competitive edge to places like China and, and, and other such. Laura, what do you think the United States can do to regenerate a competitive export and manufacturing? Well, I think the key word uh, John raised is investment, and I think it is absolutely essential. You know, we get caught up in discussions of uh, deficit reduction or stimulus. Let's forget those uh, issues for a minute and just think about investment. And here it is investment in a number of things. I've heard uh, Senator Corker talk about the importance of infrastructure. For years going into the Great Recession, we, it has been noted that the U.S. has been investing inadequately in its infrastructure, maybe to the tune of $200 billion a year of economically justifiable infrastructure investments we're not doing. Why? Let me turn to investment uh, in education. It is the case. We used to be number one in the world in college graduation rates. We are now number 14, number 15. We're leading the world in high school dropout rates. And as I said, the unemployment problem is most severe in dropout. So invest in people, invest in infrastructure, invest in knowledge. You know, we basically are trying to get the research and development spending in this country up to 3% so we can again be leaders in the world in that. Invest, invest, invest is really what we must do. Public-private partnerships. You All know, right. about a hundred billion dollars of the stimulus package is levered to private spending. A dollar spent by the public sector on infrastructure can bring three dollars of private spending. So Martin Regalia, why isn't the private sector investing, investing, investing? Well, I think, you know, our tax laws and our other uh, regulatory structure in Washington don't foster that. Um, we tax savings uh, multiple times. We don't allow full cost recovery. Uh, we don't allow expensing on investment. We can't even pass an R&D credit extension that's been delayed for over a year um, through a Congress that's, that's fighting with each other. And when you don't have the kind of laws and the kind of tax structure that facilitate and encourage investment, you get a lot less of it. We tax our multinational corporations on their overseas profit. We're the only major trading country in the OECD that still does that, that doesn't have a territorial tax system. And so what do we do? We tell our people, go out and export, and then we tell them, we're going to tax you more than every other person you have to compete with in the global economy. Senator Corker, what about that? We were talking about Congress, and you just heard Mr. Regalia talking about Congress fighting with each other and not getting these things done. What do you think can be done? You said chill out, calm down, perhaps till after the election. What can be done to fix this, do you think, in a bipartisan way? Well, I think one of the things we need to do, I've heard Laura talking about investment, is as a country, we need to decide how much should the federal government spend. Uh, on average, it's been 20.3% over the last 50 years. I heard Erskine Bowles the other day say 21%, but I think much of our debate goes to little issues that really divide our country, but that needs to be the first issue. How much should the federal government take in from the private sector? Once that decision is made, I might say 18%, Erskine may say 21%, maybe the right number is someplace in between. But after that decision is made, what is the appropriate tax policy to generate economic growth? And I think that some comments have been made about our lack of uh, the way we tax. We do tax investment. Uh, we encourage people to go into debt. I think our tax policy in this country certainly needs to be looked at, and it needs to be looked at in a way to encourage investment, to encourage growth. Obviously, if our gross domestic product grows, then the whole issue of debt diminishes. Mm -hmm. The kind of things that Laura's talking about are more able to be done. So I, I think we, we need to move to that big picture first, look at what's appropriate. I think most people in America would rather determine what to do with their own money uh, versus let uh, 535 people decide for, for them. But the fact is that that we get mired down in these little issues that divide us when really we ought to focus as a country on this bigger issue first. So let, let me uh, go to you, Governor Corzine. Uh, you, you lost an election, your re-election in your state. When you um, were governor, when you took office, uh, unemployment was at 4.7. When you left, it was 9.9. .9. Is that why you lost? And you've talked about how it was painful, but in, in 2020 hindsight, what could you have learned from that, do you think? Well, I think that any time the economy is weak, 
uh, incumbents are going to have uh, challenging re-election on most instances, and that certainly was the case when you have unemployment rise that much. We were in the midst of the financial meltdown and the aftershocks of that in uh, 2009. I think we'll see some of that this fall. But I, I want to go back to, we, we have been successful in this country in driving investment with higher tax rates than what we have today. I think the issue about setting those and making sure that uh, the expiring tax cuts that are actually on the table uh, at the end of this year, that needs to get addressed and it needs to get addressed relatively quickly because that does create uncertainty while that is yet to be resolved. I would hope that the Congress and the President would either say we're going to get to a conclusion about the long term or we're going to extend this for a year and we'll come back and debate this at another point in time because that's a major uncertainty overhanging the economy. In the long run though, we overemphasize taxes relative to the general confidence and the well-being of our middle class. That comes together and you'll see it in the elections. If you have that high unemployment rate extending over a period of time, people are going to be mighty unhappy and they're going to take it out on both Democrats and Republicans. Let me just quickly go to what you mentioned about being competitive with the rest of the world. The big story out of Europe this weekend is that Germany has shown a stronger Absolutely. than expected uh, stronger than expected growth over the last quarter. Laura, you were saying something about how Germany had had taught and trained its workforce to, to compete in these situations. Right. Well, Germany has had a, a long-term commitment to manufacturing, and it has a very strong manufacturing base. It has a much a larger share of its economy in manufacturing than we do. A major part of that is serious vocational training and very serious ongoing training for manufacturing workers in Germany. And oftentimes a German uh, firm with German workers will retrain and use technology at home rather than offshore those jobs abroad. Right. And I want to point out also that Germany manages to do this with a much higher uh, tax rate than we do. I think there should be corporate tax reform. I agree with what a lot of what Senator Corker and Martin Regalia have said. But we need investment. And I would say in thinking about the share of government and GDP, something that Senator mentioned, we need to distinguish between investment spending by the government, whether it's federal, state, or local, okay. and other spending. A dollar spent for infrastructure mm -hmm. is different than a dollar spent for current operations. All right, we've government. got about 30 seconds left. I want to know, do you think, Martin Regalia and then Senator Corker, can some confidence be injected into the American consumer anytime soon? Yeah, I think it can. I think one thing that we have to address right away is what's going to happen at the end of the year with the 2001 and 2003 tax cuts. There ought to be an extension, at least a temporary extension, and that would help to, to ease both the consumer's fears and the business fears. Senator Corker, 15 seconds. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It, let's, uh, let's leave tax policy as it is. Mark Zandi had a great piece today in the New York Times saying the same. Let's, let's not fiddle anymore. Let's, leave, a, let's well, leave things so they're predictable and deal with, uh, deal with this down the road. Well, well, we'll see how that plays out ahead of the elections and afterwards. Thank you all for joining us on this important topic.